Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Sneha and welcome back to the Perio Hub. So today we're going to talk about the third periodontal tissue which is the cementum. So in the earlier broadcast we discussed about the gingiva and the periodontal ligament and today let's talk about cementum. So cementum is one of the hard tissues of the tooth structure which covers the anatomic root of the tooth. So if we see this particular picture, we can appreciate that this part right here is the enamel and this pale yellow mineralized uh, tissue which is covering the anatomic root is the cementum. And within the enamel and cementum, we have a layer of dentine. So we have a layer of uh, radicular dentine and the coronal dentine. So this would be our coronal dentine and inside the cementum, we have a layer of the radicular dentine. Apart from that, we have the alveolar bone uh, surrounding the tooth. So, the hard tissues are the enamel, the cementum, the dentine and ultimately the alveolar bone. Now, cementum was first discovered in the year 1835 by two pupils of Purkinji. Now, coming on to the location of the cementum. So, cementum basically covers the anatomic uh, tooth root. So, it starts at the cervical region at the CEJ. So, CEJ is the cemento enamel junction which is present between the enamel and the cementum. Now there are various types of cemento enamel junctions and we'll be talking about the various types of these junctions a bit later. But uh, for now let's understand that the cementum is a tissue which is which starts at the cervical end of the CEJ and it extends up till the apex of the root. So from the CEJ till the apex. So coming on to the features of uh, the cementum, now we'll talk about three very important features of cementum. So the first is we are talking about the composition. Now cementum is mainly composed of uh, the organic substances and the inorganic substances. Organic substances is approximately 50 to 55 percent and inorganic substances being 45 to 50 percent. Uh, and organic substances is mainly composed of the collagen fibers and inorganic substances are made up of the hydroxy apatite crystals. Now the second important uh, feature we will be talking about is the dynamic nature. So what do we understand by the concept of uh, dynamic nature of cementum is that firstly it is formed throughout life. So cementum is deposited as the age progresses. So at any given point of time, uh, the amount of cementum is quite varied. And the second feature of dynamicity comes from the fact that there are different types of cementum in different uh, areas of the root. So we have the acellular cementum and we have the uh, cellular cementum. We have the intrinsic and extrinsic fiber cementum. So all these different types of cementum are seen uh, along the root surface um, and this also adds on to the concept of dynamic nature of cementum. The third unique feature of cementum is that it is mesodermal in origin. So to understand what do we mean by the term mesodermal, we need to understand the development of the cementum which comes under the process of cementogenesis. So if we talk about cementogenesis, it starts off with the crown formation and after the enamel is formed, the enamel is then covered by a layer of reduced enamel epithelium. Uh, now reduced enamel epithelium as the term suggests is an epithelial component and it is formed to protect the underlying enamel. Now if we closely observe the basal parts, the area where the inner and the outer enamel epithelium will meet, it forms a loop which is termed as the cervical loop. So this right here is the cervical loop portion. Now in the next stage there is proliferation of the cervical loop in a, in a manner that it forms a Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. So it proliferates towards the apical aspect on both the sides. So if we talk about the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath as you can see it is a bilayered tissue. So it has two types of layers. So we have the inner epithelial cells which is facing towards the dental papilla and we have the outer epithelial cells which faces the dental sac or the dental follicle. So this is the dental sac right here and inside portion is the dental papilla. Now in the apical portion there is a bent in the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath and this is called as the epithelial diaphragm. Now this hole of the epithelial root sheath 
uh, helps in the in formation of a mold onto which the radicular dentin and the cementum surface is laid down now in the next step what happens is that the epithelial diaphragm sends out signaling molecules so that the cells of the dental papilla will undergo differentiation and form the odontoblasts which further help in the secretion of the radicular dentine. Now we have spoken in great detail about the uh, dental papilla and the dental sac in the uh, video where we've discussed about the development of the tooth. I'll be linking that video somewhere on the screen. Uh, you can go back and refer to that video for better overall understanding. So coming back to the formation of the radicular dentine. Now the dentine which is first laid down by the odontoblast is the immature dentine and it is also called as the mantle dentine. So once the mantle dentine formation occurs, the next step is that the cells of the dental sac now we need to understand that the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath is an epithelial aspect and near to our epithelium there is always presence of connective tissue. So the cells of the dental sac are cells of the connective tissue. So these connective tissue cells will proliferate towards the epithelial aspect and cells cause invasion within the epithelial root sheath. This further leads to the disintegration of the epithelial root sheath to occur. So as a result, the epithelial root sheath will break itself in certain areas and it will disintegrate. Now in certain areas, there are remnants of these epithelial root sheath which are seen and these are then termed as the epithelial cell rests of malasis. And these are seen within both the uh, within both the cementum as well as the periodontal ligament. So once the disintegration occurs, the cells of the connective tissue directly come in contact with the mantle dentine. And once this occurs, the dental sac cells proliferate into two subtypes. We have the fibroblast cells which orient perpendicular to the root sheath and helps in the formation of the collagen fibers. And uh, we have the cementoblast cells which are very important which orient parallel to the root sheath and help in the formation of the cementum which is immature and this is the cementoid tissue. So the fibroblast cells orient itself perpendicular to the root surface and help in the collagen fiber synthesis whereas the cementoblast cells orient parallel to the root surface and help in the cementum deposition onto the mantle dentine. And this cementum which is formed is the cementoid tissue. So till now we saw the phase 1 of deposition of the homogeneous tissue which is termed as the cementoid tissue. Now in the second phase of uh, cementogenesis there is calcification of this cementoid tissue which occurs. So there is deposition of the calcium ions onto the cementoid tissue and it forms the mature cementum. Now one more important aspect that we'll be talking about is is that during the deposition of the cementum uh, the superficial layer like within the superficial layer the cementum does not completely get calcified it still remains as a uncalcified cementoid tissue along with presence of cementoblast cells and onto these cementoblasts and the cementoid tissue there is insertions of the periodontal fibers which are seen and these fibers then form the sharpie ligament fibers which help in anchoring the tooth to the alveolar bone. We have spoken about uh, the sharpie fibers in the periodontal ligament fibers versus the gingival fibers and I will be again linking that video somewhere on the screen. So we just saw that how the cementum is formed from the dental sac cells and we stated that the dental sac is a type of connective tissue which is next to the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath which is the epithelial component. Now connective tissue is always mesodermal in origin and that is the reason we state that the cementum is a mesodermal tissue. So to quickly recapitulate what we saw uh, in this present video, we spoke about a small introduction. As stated, cementum is a calcified tissue. It was first isolated by Purkinje. We spoke about the various features of cementum and why exactly do we call it the dynamic tissue. Then we spoke about the process of cementogenesis. 
uh, and we spoke about uh, the role of the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath and how it undergoes the disintegration due to the connective tissue cells of the dental sac. We spoke about the two major stages that is first stage of the formation of the cementoid tissue which is, uh, which is the immature cementum and how then it undergoes uh, calcification to produce the mature cementum. So I hope this short introductory video on cementum was helpful and useful and if it was do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and also share this video with your friends and colleagues and I'll be back soon with my next broadcast where we'll be talking about cementum much more in detail and until we meet next take good care of yourself. This is Perioha signing off.